So Bunhill Burial Ground was used from 1665 until 1854, in which approximately 123,000 people were buried here. They're all built into the path that you walk along. So they've built the path over the gravestones. So this is the rest and place of John Bunyan, author of The Pilgrim's Progress, 31st of August, 1688, age 60. Excuse the background noise. This is a very noisy graveyard. So Bunyan had a very interesting life. He started off as a tinker and then he went into the military and was very well known for his foul language, which he picked up from his dad. Two years after leaving the military, Bunyan married. Whilst married, he became interested in religion and started to write some books about it. In 1658, Bunyan's wife died, leaving him four small children, and one of them was sadly blind. But a year later, he married an 18-year-old woman named Elizabeth. A few years later, Bunyan was arrested. He was preaching in a building which wasn't a church and in the time it was illegal to attend a, re a religious gathering other than the parish at the parish church with more than five people outside of your own family. Bunyan then spent 12 years in prison leaving his pregnant wife and children in financial hardship. His wife then went on to give birth prematurely and their baby was sadly stillborn. Bunyan was freed from jail in May 1672 and went on to uh, devote his time to writing and pe preaching. The Pilgrim's Progress was published in 1678. On the way to his friends in London, Bunyan was caught in a storm and he fell ill with fever and subsequently he then died. So. By the looks of it, her body is in there. Here lies, oh, I read it the wrong way around, sorry. Here lies Dame Mary Page, relic of Sir Gregory Page Bart. She departed this life March 4th, 1728, in the 56th year of her age. So in 67 months, she was tapped 66 times. Apparently that means bled. Had taken away 240 gallons of water without ever reaping at her case of ever fearing the operation. So I may have got that a bit wrong. You see, Mary, she had a form of dropsy which caused excess fluid to build up in the space around her lungs. So what that actually meant was that she had to have all of that drained 66 times and they took away over 240 gallons of fluid off her chest. Ah, so she was bled 66 times and uh, never feared being bled. Hello, little birdie. Hello. So we go from little birdies to the less pleasant side of Bunhill. So Bunhill Fields got its name from its use as a burial ground during the Saxon period and a macabre event that took place in the 16th century. The Charnel House at St Paul's had been used since the 13th century to store the bones and skeletons as disturbed by later burials. You see, during this period, it became acceptable to dig up human rem remains from their resting place. When no flesh remained on the skeleton, it was believed that the soul only remained with the body as long as they were fresh on the bones. These bones were stored in a place called a charnel house. I have done a video um, on this, on a charnel house, a bone chapel, I'll link it below in the bio. 
So, cartloads of the bones from the Charnel House at St Paul's Cathedral were moved out to, to here um, and dumped in such large quantities that they formed a hill uh, of bones with only a layer of soil covering them. Grace in the middle of the park, William Blake. Nearby lie the remains of poet and painter William Blake and his wife Catherine Sophia. So two pins left on there. So Blake was unrecognised really during his life, but now he's considered an influential figure in the history of the poetry and visual arts of the Romantic Age. On the day of Blake's death in August in 1827, he was working on his Dante series and he sat and drawed a picture of his wife, Kate. When he finished, he sat and sung hymns and verses while promising that he would always be with his wife, Kate. He then died at 6 p.m. that evening. Daniel Defoe Now according to Wikipedia, uh, I mean my own knowledge um, Defoe was an English writer, trader, journalist, pamphleteer and more epically a spy. As you read on his tombstone there just now, um, you probably realise that he is actually the author of the no novel Robinson Crusoe, which I did actually know and I didn't have to look that one up. And not just because it was written on the tombstone. I may be lying a little bit. I may not did know that. Who can say I'm a strange person? The Reverend Joseph Swain. Maybe it's an old rector or something? Of Woolworth. Oh, bless you, know, he died, he was only 35. Yeah, but 1796, that was still a good age. Yeah, I guess. I wonder why the rest of the graveyard is chained off. I should have taken a photo of that map, shouldn't I? Yep. Have you got one looking round at the outside so you can see how it No. Coats in the middle of a built up area. That noise you heard earlier was an air ambulance, apparently, because we just watched it lift. I didn't think it was appropriate to put that on film, but many of these graves, as I see in the earlier ones, they're open, so it looks like there's some work being done on them. And for some reason, that's stopped, so they've just got a cover over them. Strange. So, Bunhill is famous for being a massive plague pit.
which is why I think it's uh, being preserved quite a lot and people can't go in there. Joseph Hardcastle, merchant of the City of London, excuse the rain, lies beneath the lawn in front of this stone. He was a founder of the British and Foreign Bible Society and first treasurer of London Missionary Society. He was associated with William Wilberforce in the campaign to abolish slavery. So there's the garden. Joseph Hart was by the free and, and sovereign grace and spirit of God raised up from the depths of sin and delivered from the bonds of mere profession and self-righteousness and led to rest entirely for salvation in the finished atonement and perfect obedience of Christ. Hearts Hymns The author's remains were interred on the spot. As the original stone yet remains to show, which I take as that. Moving Bowesfield, late of the parish of St. Clay's, Southwark. Hester, his first wife, who died without issue. Sarah, his second wife, the best of women, leaving ten children to lament in her irreparable loss. Reverend Joseph Barber, Townsend's, a Chelsea surgeon, died 38 years, Mrs. Anne Philipson. What? That, yeah, I did see that. There's a massive hole there. This is Elizabeth Rayner, early allied in blood to the illustrious House of Percy, deemed it a still greater honour to be the friend and Philip, fellow worshipper of Mr and Mrs Lindsay and by her own desire was deposited in the same grave. Oh. In this vault reposes the Reverend Theophilus Lindsay, late of St John's College in the University of Cambridge and sometime vicar of Catterick in Yorkshire. Having resigned his preferment in the church for the sake of the truth and good consequence, conscience, not consequence, sorry, another helicopter, he became the founder of the chapel in Essex Street. This venerable confessor ended his blameless and exemplary life. Is it the third day of November? I don't know Roman numerals. Sorry, I think I only got the top of that then the whole time I was reading it. Miss Hannah Lindsay, relic of the late Reverend Lindsay survived her honourable consort little more than three years and full of hope and good works. 
expired January gain more Roman numerals. Lady Anne Erskine.